Hey guys, v here with another V-Plays, and by request, we are hopping into the 302. The 302 is going to be a premium tier 7 rocket-powered plane, pow also with augmented power with a couple of ramjets. This was ne never actually put into production. They built a glider variant of it, and the whole concept is a ramjet is a very efficient engine design that involves just kind of forcing air through a set of ductwork, allowing it to be able to compress gases in order for the engine to have a continuous burn in one direction. However, in order for a ramjet to work, it has to have initial velocity and air being pushed through the engine somehow. In this case, they are doing that by having an actual rocket engine in the tail, a chemical rocket system similar to what we saw with the ME-163, the Comet, or the J-8M in-game. That allowed it to be able to get up to speed, and once it was airborne, the ramjets would have taken over. Again, they only got to the glider of this airplane and never actually went to the full production model, but this is what it should have been. We do have a very small cockpit. It looks like it should be bigger, like it almost looks like a version of a commercial airliner, uh, but it is actually pretty small. And we do have four 20 millimeter cannons in the nose. Because of the, I should have done this right from the get go. Let's go intercept the heavy. Because we have this uh, ability to bump that rocket motor, we have pretty much infinite climb capability it allows us to really be able to get across the battlefield and then also be able to outclimb almost every heavy at our tier. Now we are out tiered right now. This is a tier 8 match. But as you can see, we're able to make pretty short work of the 1056. It's not exactly quick work, but we were eventually able to take them out. That is a human controlled aircraft, so we're going to indicate an intention to attack that aircraft. I'm trying to find a good angle so that we can come in for a boom and zoom run. There is a typhoon over here, however, and up. Oh, light fighter is going to be a better option for us just because of the 20s damage output here. Now, we were able to take that guy out in a single pass. We do have the typhoon down below us, but most the best thing we can do here is just pull away. We really want to try and help our guys get the mine. We know the mine's one of the most important sectors to get on one of these battlefields. This is a 288A, and I feel relatively confident that we can survive the tail gunner fire we're going to be encountering with this aircraft. But as you can see, by alternating the boost a little bit, not holding it down consistently unless you got the boost cooler up, allows you to be able to stay at some pretty decent velocities. But we also have fairly decent slower speed capability as well. Killing this bomber in the zone is going to net us a lot of the capture points and that allowed our IL-8 to be able to make short work of what was left on the ground. Now I really don't want to be engaging a B-32 in aerial combat but we got 15 seconds before it's going to affect the zone so I'm just going to try to damage this aircraft as much as possible. Slowing down a little bit here almost making contact there gonna hit the booster to get down below him so we're not in the line of fire and it looks like we're able to burn him out so that works out well for us we can either try and defend or we can Ooh, this guy's gonna be going for my bomber this is a good target for us he's also lower health which makes that intercept course that much better uh, like I said before, we can go after the 288A. There are better things that I could be doing. Well, things that are better for my aircraft build. However, it is important to maintain the mine since it does count as two zones. And if the enemy gets hold of it, we're going to have a really big uphill climb because I don't have any capability to really affect this zone. Now, we just lost our tail. I am not the only aircraft engaging this plane because we do have a human and a P-51H. Again, my tail is out right now. We're going to hit the uh, pneumatic assist to be able to kind of compensate for the loss of the tail. Thomas is down here causing us a bit of a headache as well. We did pick up the garrison, which is great. We do have a human in an IL-8 as well. I'm a little bit wary of when the B-32 comes back. That'll be very dangerous. Get some guns on here. Just tap away. Now we're actually going to blow right past him. And the reason we're going past him is I want to limit the amount of time I'm in his tail gunner. So we'll come back around. 
re-engage with the 20s. P-51 is taking the lion's share of the damage right now. There is the B-32. Oh no. How did he get... Did he die? Yeah, he did. It's quite unfortunate. Now, I believe this is a human-controlled aircraft just because I saw it attacking the enemy... Or the friendly bomber. So we'll have to bear that in mind. We're going to hit the boost cooler, try and get underneath this arc of fire. It's a very dangerous platform. And we lost a few hit points there. It is getting a little bit low on health, though. I am definitely leaning towards human based on the flight profile I'm seeing. And we got him in the zone. Nice. That's given us a ghost of a chance here. I actually want to check that. No, it is not a human. I thought it was a human. Now, even though we're up above our altitude envelope, we are able to maintain this over 400 mile an hour speed. And a lot of this is due to the fact that we are using a boost cooler. Or sorry, a improved mixture for one of our pieces of equipment. And that allows, uh, we have it rolled for reduced cooldown of the boost. Because we rely very heavily on the boost to be able to get the speed from the rocket motor. Looks like the ground attacker ended up taking some pretty decent damage. The enemy having the airfield makes things a little bit more difficult because now these aircraft are immediately spawning essentially in range of the mine. We're able to start a fire, which is going to help out for getting some extra damage. You see the mine just ticked over, getting us closer to what we want for capture here the fire is out the fire is back on and we managed to take him out uh we'll go ahead and f2 the bomber i have not been making very good use of the bot controls Ooh, you're even more deadly go after him please i don't want to get in the b32's tail gunner now if that was a human controlled b32 you should be able to do a single pass capture of the mine. And he is really cooking, isn't he? Uh, unfortunately, they just picked the zone up and we're going to do something that might seem questionable. We're actually going to leave him alone. We've got 23 seconds before this zone is available for capture. The bomber is on relatively low health. If we wait to kill him, then we might be able to get some more of this capture. Tell planes we want them to come over here for capture in the zone. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And now we can kill this guy. Get him. And that gave us a lot of the capture on this zone. However, we are very close to losing this. We do have the IL-8. Looks like he's on his way in right down there. But now they have all the positions and we are in a bit of trouble right now. I'm going to try to come in on what looks like a human-controlled A7M. Man, those are all the human-controlled aircraft, I think, right there. Oh, nice. We didn't actually kill that aircraft. It looks like he might have been killed by the tail gunner there. That was all us right there. And unfortunately, we ended up losing, and that was just due to losing the mine. Like I said right at the beginning, this game is essentially won and lost over the mine, but we still had a decent score, and I'm proud of the results. So we'll get to the end result screen, and we'll go over what we actually were able to accomplish on the whole a uh, little bit of a tough spot for an aircraft like this this aircraft is great for being able to counter heavies and light fighters that are unaware and yep, we'll add you to there black betty okay and we were able to take out 11 aircraft and five of those were actually bombers two uh heavy fighters and two light fighters 
So yeah, it was a pretty decent match for us, but a lot of the work we were doing was over the mine. Unfortunately, we just did not have the capability to really hold those guys at bay, uh, and they were able to get the win on us. Uh, yeah, that was a human in the A7M. And we had the IL-8 and the P-51H. So, again, we posted a pretty decent score. We were bottom tier, but we are specialized in the airframe, which opens up a lot of avenues here. Still lacking mechanical parts to really be able to kick this up. But as I said, we rely on that rocket motor a lot. So you'll see here we've actually gone... Oh, no. I'm totally wrong. I did not end up getting the cooldown. But if you want the cooldown... Maybe we have enough parts now. No, not quite. I'm going to show you how to reassemble to get what you need. And how you can determine what's available is you see this dice roll here. I have the option of rolling for engine cooldown as a possible characteristic. So there's really only one result that can happen here. Cost me 200,000 credits. But now I'll, I will be getting that boost back even quicker. And I always mispronounce these because they change them from category to category. But they all do the same thing. It's the engine boost mixture injection system. Yeah, that's what it is. So this boost modification for the engine allows us to be able to roll for that. And that will get us up to those really high speeds. As you can see, we can get up to 519 miles an hour. And we had no problem maintaining really good speed and very good speed at higher altitudes. Even though the altitude, uh, max optimal altitude is only 700 7,218, 7,218, there we go, it's right there, and a service ceiling of 13,780, uh, we were able to still maintain good velocity above that max optimal. Again, the climb rate is great. 551 at tier 7 is a stellar climb rate. If we were to compare it to like the P-51D, which I also have that's specialized, uh, this aircraft's only 447 for a comparison. So, Oftentimes I call this the poor man's J8M uh, because obviously it's a tier 7 versus a tier 8 premium, but in a lot of ways it's actually much more consistent and a lot more fun to play because unlike the J8M featuring only two very short range 30s, you're getting four pretty decent range uh, 20 millimeter cannons. They range out to almost 2200 feet and they're a lot more consistent in how they operate. 336 damage isn't stellar at tier 7, but it's definitely not bad. So with that said, you are now encountering an aircraft that has similar play style to the J8M. However, it still is a lot easier to control. So if you're ever see this aircraft available and you're interested i do recommend it it's a great fun plane to fly and it can be very effective once you kind of get it uh once you kind of hammer out how to fly it again tapping the boost is going to get you the best results because even just a little bit of a tap of that boost is a rocket motor really propelling you up to those high velocities so i hope you enjoyed taking a look at the 302 and as always i'll catch you on the next one Washington,